Peggy 16. We started with the idea that we wanted to set it in the future, but in a beautiful future. We took the idea of magic and turned it into technology, so we grounded it in a reality that we could foresee. The slave's world is a world that, on one hand, is incredibly ugly. It's destroyed, it's full of old relics. It's kind of post-post-apocalyptic. Nature has retaken the planet, so where there was man-made structures, buildings, roads, cities, nature has now overcome. What would take for the world to end and become like that? So we did a timeline from now to about 150, 200 years and mark the different events that would need to happen to get to that point. You know, it's after the machine wars have happened, it's after swine flu has killed us all, it's after all commerce has collapsed, um, and people have effectively become irrelevant. But on the other hand, it's also a place that's incredibly beautiful to look at. Usually when you see an apocalyptic world, it's grey and brown and desolate. What we don't like usually is monochromatic uh, games. People have a tendency to think that if humanity dies, then the world dies with them, and it's totally the opposite that's true. When we're off the face of the earth, nature just reclaims everything, and it's amazing how quickly you see uh, things that we felt were permanent start to dilapidate. We much prefer to, through colors, show emotion, show a colorful uh, environment, epic views. Larger than life, you know, everything's richer than you imagine. You know, if we're going to add atmospherics or lens flares to the game or fog or transmit kind of lighting through leaves and, and through skin, let's look at how we can actually do that physically correct and then let's ramp that up because that's the style we're trying to go for. You know, it's believable but it's richer and larger than life. You can see places like um, where something horrific has happened, like Chernobyl, and where nature has retaken it. It's beautiful in amongst the destruction and the desolation, and that was the feeling that we really wanted to capture. The game starts in New York, and the reason it starts in New York, New York's a universal city, everyone recognises it, so when you start there you're basically saying, this is Earth. But as they leave New York City and start heading further towards the west, towards their ultimate goal, they pass through vestiges of, the, of history, so there is one uh, large area where hundreds of titans large mechs, taller than buildings, fought together, smashed each other to bits and created this kind of desolate landscape of, of oil spills and chemicals all merged together amongst this twisted metal. When you go through later levels, you know, things start to get even more kind of grander and a bit more fantasy. It'll at least be remembered when you play it, like there'll be imagery, there'll be sounds, there'll be, there'll be an experience about it that then becomes part of you. That's how you kind of immortalize your games. And that's what we're trying to achieve. Make a game that we would want to watch, play, touch, hear, see. That's, that's our objective.